This video will show you how to do a chi-squared test. I'm going to do it two ways, the first in Excel and the second in R. Remember, these are data from the Pew Research Center that asked 10,957 people, you can see the value here in the last column and row in the totals table, what their thoughts were on climate change. They asked, does human activity contribute to climate change? And respondents agreed or, or did not agree to that. They said it contributes to climate change a great deal, human activity contributes to climate change some, or it contributes not too much or not at all. And they surveyed people depending on whether they were Republican or leaned Republican or Democrat or lean Democrat. And so we have the data here. So from the 10,957 people surveyed, you can see our two-way table here. Uh, and so, for example, we could say that 1,100 Republicans or those that said they leaned Republican said that human activity can contributes a great deal to, to climate change. And so you can see where the other ones shake out here as well. And so the objective of the chi-square test is to compare these observed values with what we might expect given how the data are arranged. And so these are the observed values. These are the raw data that we're working with. We can then calculate the expected counts. And so here are our expected counts. Given what we know about the data, here's how we might expect the data to fall, assuming there was no relationship between the two variables. And these are going to depend on how many in each row and column are, there are. And so as an example, we can calculate, and you can see the calculations in Excel if you click through, uh, and I'll share the file here below, but you can see the calculations and how we calculate those expected counts for each of the six combinations. Now remember here, our number of degrees of freedom is going to equal two. We have three responses as columns, and we have two responses as rows, and so three minus one is two, 2 minus 1 is 1, 2 times 1 is 2 degrees of freedom. So that's important to know in particular when we go look up these values on the F table. And so we have our observed counts, we have our expected counts. Now we want to square the values for those differences and divide them by the expected counts. And that's what this table is doing. And again, I encourage you to see which cells are being subtracted, squared, and then divided by as you click into the cells here in Excel. And so we calculate our observed minus expected values squared divided by the expected values in this table. And then we sum all of those values, and that is the chi-square statistic when we sum all the values in the table. And what do you know? We get a very large value, 2,949. And so with two degrees of freedom, our critical value, if we looked it up on the F table, was 5.99. And so we already know because 2,949 is so much bigger than 5.99, we're going to reject the null hypothesis and conclude that there's a relationship between one's political leaning and their views on whether or not human activity contributes to climate change. Now that's how we might do it in Excel. I find looking at it in Excel really allows me to look at the observed and expected counts and allows me to see what's going on behind the scenes in the chi-square test. In R, the chi-square test is quite easy. So let's go to R. I'm going to load the data and I'm going to use the tidyverse package to change the data slightly. So I'm going to load the tidyverse package. And then I'm going to enter the climate change data, politics data, uh, using the triple function. I like the triple function because it allows you to do to make really short and quick data sets. All of my names for my columns are here. All of my data points are here. And so I'm going to run that and it'll get me my data. Now it turns out the chi-squared test that will run in R needs to have the data stored in a matrix format. And so all I'm going to do here with climate two is I'm going to change climate and I'm going to use the pipe function here from tidyverse to change the climate the, the climate data set and I'm going to use this column to row names and I'm going to change the column that has politics that is whether you're Republican or lean Republican or Democrat lean Democrat I'm going to change that not to a column but I'm going to change it to a row name the difference is subtle but we'll see it here in a minute 
And so climate two now is my new data set. And I'm just going to print out what climate looks like. You can see here climate has four different variables, politics, a great deal, some, none at all. This is our two-way table. And then climate two is looks very similar, but we've just changed the row names here to the political party. And so the differences are subtle, but they're important when we perform the chi-square test. What I love about the chi-square test function in R is it's simple. All you have to do if you set up the data correctly like we have is put the name of the data there and then run the chi-square.test function. And so we'll run that. And here's the output. What do you know? The chi-squared statistic that it calculates is 2949.2 with two degrees of freedom and a very small p-value. So we can see that here. So if we compare this 2949.2 to the Excel calculation we did, well, what do you know? We got the same number doing it in Excel that we did doing it in R. So if we go back to R, we can also say that we have enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis, and therefore we can conclude there is a strong evidence uh, between uh, one's politics and the perceptions on climate change. Uh, and so that chi-square value is very, very large, much larger than our critical value. So we have evidence to reject the null hypothesis in this case. So that's how we could do a chi-square test, whether we do it kind of manually in Excel or whether we use R and the chi-square.test function.